One of the nation's largest railroad workers unions narrowly voted to reject a contract brokered by the White House. The no vote means thousands of workers could go on strike in a matter of weeks if another deal is not reached. Seven railroad unions voted to approve the deal, but these new contracts need approval from all 12 unions to prevent a strike. A strike, by the way, could be catastrophic for the U.S. economy, costing the country up to $2 billion every day the workers are on strike. Richard Edelman joins us now. He's an attorney for the railroad union BMWED, one of the unions that voted against the contract. Richard, I'm so glad you're here because I'm just curious about what didn't make it into the contract that the union you work with rejected. Um, a major issue that contributed to the um, not ratification of these agreements was the lack of paid sick leave. Uh, most railroad workers have no paid sick leave. And uh, the experience of the pandemic obviously highlighted that as a major shortcoming of existing collective bargaining agreements. And uh, that contributed to that. Now, I should point out, you noted that uh, seven unions had ratified. Um, you should know that when you add together smart transportation, which uh, failed ratification today, rather than it's away, the signalman, that's over 50% of railroad workers. Okay, so what you're saying is uh, it's 50% rejection, so an overall popular rejection here uh, of the contract in question. You mentioned the paid sick leave. The, the deal, which the Biden administration helped broker, uh, did include a pay bump of 24%. I hear, just in reading through uh, this story and around it, that uh, there's dissatisfaction with that, which sounds like a healthy bump because the, the rail companies themselves are making, you know, billions in, in profit. Uh, what is the calculation? Because a lot of people hear 24 percent pay increase and they think, hey, that's great. Well, first of all, you have to, A, recognize that that's 24 percent over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. B, um, this three years in so far, the employees have not had any increase, so they've been suffering uh, with that. C, that 24% may or may not keep up with the current rate of inflation over this, this period. So while certainly, you know, nobody's going to sneeze at a 24% uh, increase, it is, you know, it, it's not like that's a big magnanimous amount. Um, by the way, the, 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 that came as a recommendation from a presidential emergency board um, that was appointed by President Biden. It wasn't, you know, broken by the Biden administration. The board made these recommendations. They're not binding. They're not binding on the unions or on the carriers or a basis for negotiations. Our unions have said, the unions that rejected the contract, their members did, um, have said, we think it could ratify with paid sick leave. Um, remember that the union leaderships do not just sign agreements. They have to be ratified by the members. Um, the union, after you're referring to um, uh, all night session with several of the unions in September that the Biden administration put together, that was enough to put it out for ratification. But the memberships and those unions that have rejected it have spoken, and they said that's not enough. And what the unions have heard is there needs to be paid sick leave. Uh, as a part of their working conditions. The scenes you're showing there now are um, where that was, you know, the administration got some things put together that were deemed good enough to put out for the members to vote on. But now you have the members' reaction in those organizations that did reject it. And, uh, Richard, that has been, I mean, the paid sick leave and sick leave in general has been such a big issue as we've been reporting uh, on, on this situation for a long time. I understand that President Biden said he's going to be addressing this today. But if a deal isn't reached, I understand that Congress will have to step in and that lawmakers could have the power to impose contract terms if both sides can't reach an agreement? First of all, do you see that happening? Wow. What would be the risks of that happening? Well, so Congress has authority under the Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution to step in and legislate a, a resolution, and their authority to do that date, dates back to 1918. Um, they, that's not something under the Railway Labor Act. That's something that Congress can do as part of its constitutional authority. Um, they can do that and they can imp impose terms and they have done that in the past over the decades on and off um what are you know we 
hope that if they do that, we urge them to uh, ensure that there be some paid sick leave for railroad workers because it's way past time for that to happen. Uh, how do you, I mean, the uh, this threat of, uh, of a strike and the projection, the estimate you hear about billions in losses for the overall U.S. economy, people hear that and that sounds real bad. Uh, I mean, do you think that's an accurate number? Uh, I have no, uh, so two things. I, I have no idea if that's an accurate number. Two, it doesn't have to happen. The railroads can give us the paid sick leave, which is an infinitesimal amount of the profits they are making. I, I think I have, we have a number of somewhere it's like, you know, a penny on a dollar of what their profits are. They have been so phenomenally profitable over recent years, it, it's hard to even calculate. And they've been forking over um, stock buybacks to the shareholders, and you know, on just on a consistent basis, it's billion, like $55 billion over one period. I mean, I could run through with you the, the triple digit profits they've been making over the last 15 years. And, and this is this is a drop in the bucket on that. Mm -hmm. And it's way past time for them to do that after their workers work straight through the pandemic. The other thing I would point out that the railroads themselves have been providing you know, poor service to their shippers at a cost to the U.S. economy already. And one of the things that could help improve railroad service is for them to uh, treat their workers properly and give them uh, benefits that millions of workers throughout the United States economy already have. Yeah. This will sound faintly ridiculous from a guy in a tie with makeup on under the lights, but uh, not long ago, I had the opportunity to spend time at conductor training school, some sort of an academy that BNSF runs at, uh, near Glacier National Park. I was out there with the conductors uh, as they were working, as they were learning the job. It's difficult work, it's and important crucial. work, yeah. it's dangerous work, uh, yeah. and I hope everybody can, at the end of the day, get what they feel they are fairly uh, owed. Richard Edelman. We Edel hope so too, and that's what we've been trying to accomplish. Richard Edelman, thank you very much. Thank you.